Hi, this is Bob Rock. You guys may remember me from that classic 2019 hit, The Misadventures of Bob Rock Almost Doesn't Make It to the World. <laughs> so yeah, that's me, guys. This is Bob Rock, and this is the B-Rock RC Show, a live podcast for the drifters by a drifter. It's been uh, quite a interesting uh, weekend. Well, quite a busy weekend for me actually. And um, yeah, I, I actually I didn't get to drift uh, at all this weekend, which uh, it's kind of bugging me a little bit. But you know, sometimes uh, you gotta you gotta put the drifting on pause and uh, get back to reality. You know. So, but it was a good weekend. Uh, a good friend of mine uh, has uh, tw- have twin girls, and it was their first birthday. So, that was nice uh, seeing them after a while. And um, Saturday was another family uh, get together. That was also pretty cool. So yeah, you know, sometimes you gotta, even though RC drifting is. Um, a break from reality we got to take a break from rc drifting to get back to reality what's up perry what's up yusuf what's happening boy jeez you are like uh you pop up like a mushroom dude like out of nowhere you just come out <laughs> so yeah um just to uh let the other guys know uh yusuf is actually one of uh, one of the oldest uh, members, and not by age, uh, simply by joining. Um, one of the oldest members of uh, my RC Drift Club, and uh, I've learned a hell of a lot from him, and uh, uh, caught a hiding from him, <laughs> so to speak, on the track. So yeah, it's been uh, it's been awesome having him around also, and hopefully he comes back. So yeah, uh, what's happening, guys? Well, how was your your weekend? Uh, how was the drifting, or did you do any drifting? Ooh la la, because it was uh, you know the weekend of uh, the Valentine's uh, weekend. So how was it for you guys? Um. So yeah, yeah. Let let me know what's happening. Uh, you guys are so quiet. You just want to listen to me talk. Let's have some interaction. <laughs> Let's hear what you guys have to say. So, whilst you guys are thinking about what to say, um, I wanted to touch on a, a, a topic that's been very, um, uh, I won't say close to me, but it's something that I feel very strongly about. And uh, I started the, the hashtag, don't support clones. Now, when I say don't support clones, I'm, I'm really talking about uh, uh, the cloning that has been going on and sort of is going on a little bit with uh, regards to drift chassis. No drifting for a couple of weeks, jeepers. Oh, well, well, Stefan, you, you are a different case. Well, you've got a little bundle of joy that... Uh, keeping you all busy and happy so you are completely uh, excused from that <laughs> so yeah so today we're talking about <coughs> um, uh, clone manufacturers and how they affect the industry so uh, just to give you guys a little bit of a background I must admit when I first started out I had very little knowledge about uh, the drifting community, the drifting industry, and how it works. Um, and I had bought a, a Devil Drift uh, chassis like eons ago. And later I came to know that the, the Devil Drift is actually a clone of the, the Street Jam uh, R31 chassis. So, 
And thinking back, it actually kind of makes sense why that thing was in such a terrible quality. It was ridiculously, ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. Ah, anytime, boy. You know, you know, I got you. You know, I'm, I'm holding down the fort for us here. Yeah? Anytime you you feel you want to come back, even if it's for a day, um, you know, just uh, come back. You know, we got you, Yusuf. We got you. Hey, Stig, how you doing, man? Yeah, Stefan, you know, uh, I agree with you that uh, they have to, to start off somewhere. But, uh, okay, play, okay, one one chassis in particular is the, the D-Lake uh, RER hybrid. And we all know the, the clone version of that is the, the G4, I believe. I'm not sure who the manufacturer of that clone chassis is uh, but the reason why i feel so strongly about um uh, about the about the cloning is uh especially when it comes to the the hybrid because uh, i'm sure a lot of you guys know uh and have seen the amount of uh r d that goes into uh, that went into that chassis um yeah hi it's, uh, hi stefan good to uh, good to see you listening thanks for the support as well what's up young you can you missed out on the entry but uh, on the sorry not the entry the intro <laughs> but uh, yeah thanks to you i think it uh, added a little kind of different there um so to the guys that are just joining uh joining in thank you so much for listening in this is your boy Bob Rock uh, on the B Rock RC show, a live podcast for the drifters by a drifter. Um, and really, thank you guys again for <clears throat> listening in, even if it's just for a few minutes. I really appreciate it. Uh, okay, so Brad says uh, Sakura copied OD and turned it around for the fraction of the price. They introduced thousands to to real wheel drive. Hey, Rich, how you doing, my man? Thank you so much for listening in. Uh, which uh I, I don't know maybe you can uh, you can correct me on this but you help run Dorian Lounge am I right or is Dorian Lounge like yours and a few guys got together to create Dorian Lounge yes young I did say it you want me to say it again <laughs> okay so <laughs> sorry back to back to the issue uh, at hand we were talking about clone manufacturers and how they affect the the industry um okay sakura copied od and turned it around for the fraction of the price they introduced thousands to rear wheel drive drifting that uh okay i suppose i suppose so but I, in my opinion we got to make the distinction between uh, a copy and a clone so I, I'm, so I'm I'm speaking more about a, the clone. Hey, what's up, Cisco? Thank you again for listening in. What's up, Verv? Tishin? Thank you guys for listening in. So yeah, let's hear some of your some more opinions. What's what's going on there? Um, in my opinion, there's a distinction between a copy and a clone. Um, as Brad pointed out, uh, Sakura copied OD and turned it around. But when you compare the 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 copy to the original, uh, as in the Sakura to the OD, you'll see it's although they share similarities, it's two different designs. And as everybody knows, and I'm not being bad, but uh, Sakura when they came out with the D4, they were inconsistent with the quality, which is why some people. Uh, have had good experiences with the D4 and some have had terrible experiences with the D4. What's up, Rafiki? Away, my bro. Away, away. Yeah, I I agree, Stefan. Don't feed the clones. Uh, I'm not... Uh, uh, I. How can I put it? Uh, okay, I'll just say it like it is. I, I'm strongly against clones. Uh, 
let's see usukani came from the same factory that made the dib clones ah okay yes i i have heard a few a few stories here and there with a few parts about uh, usukani that they were like a direct copy of another part or another manufacturer so they in you could call it a, a clone because they they copied the design but they didn't change anything so doesn't that isn't that a clone isn't that's what uh, regarded as a clone where you make a, a a direct copy of something else without changing the the design at all so you can't call it a copy it's a clone which is what the G4 did so uh what sparked this uh, this conversation was i had a a few words with another guy on on one of the posts uh where i hashtagged uh don't support clones yeah that's right guys i started the hashtag remember it's your boy he started the clones uh yeah rafiki we're talking about uh rc uh well this time specifically we're talking about rc uh, and the cloning that you got remember what those clones did to the <laughs> did to those poor jere ah oh, yeah dude Oh, we are all crying about that crying inside <laughs> but that's a good one <laughs> that's a good one um yeah so uh, like i was saying uh, i shared a few words with another guy uh who was like oh yeah get the get the g4 and uh, it's like at the fraction of a price of a rr and you know just buy the hybrid parts and, and put it in there and i was like uh, don't support clones why would you want to uh do that to such a small company uh, and i think we all know that uh, dlike is actually a small company they are a, a small manufacturing uh, company i think the it comprises of uh, i think like from from my understanding is like two like two guys there with the uh, uh hidetoshi yoshizawa san as the main guy there I'm sure there's other people involved but as far as I know there's like two guys there he man waka so and now you can you have a manufacturer or another yeah another company that's directly cloning that uh, that hybrid so I mean yeah it does uh, I understand that uh, you know not everybody can afford uh, the hybrid and yes this this clone does make it more affordable for for more people to to drive that chassis but you must remember you're not driving a hybrid you're driving a clone a G4 clone and even for the guys that that have or had the clone even they tell you you got to change the shocks you got to change a few other parts because they are uh, a bit dodge so they in they in uh and that's why that's one of the reasons why i say don't support clones is also because the quality of the product that you're getting is uh, a lot weaker than the original so yeah exactly i mean uh, exactly young uh, yes exactly rafiki uh, uh, young i'll get to your comment also uh, rafiki exactly brother exactly they use inferior parts and materials and then you have uh, people who who buy these clones using the you know, wood that inferior uh, quality and then saying oh no it's it's a clone of that product and then you know you don't get the full you don't enjoy the full experience of uh that product and then you said and then it puts you off it really puts you off on the, on the original uh product so you know guys for me don't support clones hashtag that um i see i've seen all, all the effort that uh, dlike has made in the r&d Uh, I'm sure lots and lots of you guys have uh, seen the same and uh I, to be honest I find it a little bit offensive that we want to support these clones 
uh, instead of supporting the manufacturers who are uh, going out there doing all of that work uh, trying to produce a product that's going to bring a lot of joy to uh, the sport uh, uh, and uh, you know a- and then to see their hard work being ripped off uh, it's not a nice feeling we got to put ourselves in their shoes or just think about uh, yourself for example if you came out with a product uh, that's that's a that's a direct clone of another product and you just uh, like a drift chassis and then you you just name it something else you use inferior materials just to make a quick buck uh, how would you feel if somebody did that to you you know so we got to look at it uh, in that perspective exactly rich exactly uh, you the clones really do make you appreciate the premium stuff uh, unfortunately, we'll have to deal with that forever, just like everything else. <sighs> yes, that that's true. That's true. Um, unfortunately, it is a sad reality that we uh, that we have to face, and not only in the RC industry, in in many many uh, different uh, industries as well. Uh, and Rich says they never really blow up anyway. That's also true. I mean, let's look at the G4. The, there's not many around there and look at the rr hybrid and the the refreshing trend that uh, we we've seen uh recently with the hybrids with many people going uh, going for the hybrid and i i said from the beginning of the year 2020 is the year of the hybrid and then you had people like uh chester pang from the endless team uh, really pushing the d like uh, brand and we see that the rise of the d like again so i think that's that's really really awesome um young says but it's a well designed concept uh, with regards to i'm sure he's talking about the d like yes i agree absolutely uh, i just hate it that uh, i just hate that you know you have somebody producing an uh, uh, an original product and then it gets ripped off uh, it gets cloned not just copied and changed which is a whole nother topic altogether but but cloned and renamed and putting out there in the market now nah, nah, that's a bit lousy you know but uh, yeah i i totally get you i totally get you guys uh i i see your uh your points and your perspectives and i uh, i acknowledge it um <laughs> let me tell you guys uh, uh, from the little i know about rich he's very particular and he does not he does not just buy anything and when he does buy something I sorry would, let me get uh, uh, pause on this yeah, yeah? Oh, oh, you still can't see the picture no i'm going to tell you um, i want to tell you after you were done cooking. what you want no i want to do the picture what you doing i want to tell you the what you want Ah, that's, uh, sorry guys, that was my son, uh, my 10 year old boy, uh, who I am setting my uh, YD2 up for and he always loves to come and talk to me at all the wrong times and sometimes when he gets started he just doesn't stop so <laughs> please uh, don't mind him, please excuse him. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, are you made in Japan, though? Hmm. I I thought it was made in Japan. Or do you have? Uh, or am I missing something? Okay, so here comes my daughter now, and let's see what she has to say. Hello, Dolly. Yes. You need help with your homework. Okay. Uh, okay, what I want you to do is take a rest. Relax your mind. I'm going to I'm going to finish up here and then I'll come help you with your homework, okay? Okay. Yeah, you know, the life of a dad it never stops. You got to keep rolling with it. What's wrong? You dropped your pencil. Don't worry about it. We'll we'll get it. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. There you, oh. there you go. Pencil. Bye bye. I'll catch you later. Bye bye. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, rich. So you saying? Well, I always thought the RER was made in Japan. I mean, because they come from Japan. So let's see. Races. Mr. Rock, a month has passed. You haven't joined us in COD. I'm so sorry, dude. I will. I will. I will join you. Uh, I promise. I promise. <laughs> yeah, Stefan. Hey, dude, your time is coming, man. Your time is coming. I'm sure the other dads here were can identify. Let's see. Can someone verify? Uh, I don't have one to check the box or manual. Uh, let's see. I don't have the. Uh, I got the manual on my phone, uh, and I'm currently using my phone, so I won't be able to check just yet. But I will check up on that, and I will get back to you. I uh, I always thought that it was uh, made in Japan, so uh, uh, I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, so that's a very interesting uh, conversation. Uh, let's see, what other clones have I have we come across? Okay, so. There's the D-like, there's the, uh, sorry, the G4, there's the Devil Drift. Yeesh, the Devil Drift, God, that it was a piece of work. But, uh, you know, it did help me to get where I am today, and it also made me, like Rich says, it makes you appreciate the premium stuff, and I definitely, definitely appreciate it. Designed, yes, but made, hmm. <clears throat> well, um, geez, you got me. You got me thinking, dude. You really got me thinking. Uh, I'll have to check and get back to you. Um, that's going to be very interesting. Uh, I wonder where is Chester? Chester may know because uh, I know he's been speaking. He speaks a lot with uh, Yoshizawa-san. Um, otherwise, I'll. I'll just check up a l uh, when we're done. I know that the OD motors are designed in Japan, but made in China. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Oh, I see. So perhaps, given that line of thinking, maybe it's made in, in China as well. Ah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, guys, that was... Uh, that's quite a, quite a nice topic, uh, quite a nice conversation we're having about... The clone chassis, cloning of products, and how they affect the industry, especially the RC industry. Uh, as Rich pointed out, uh, it makes you uh, appreciate the premium stuff, which is a very, very good, excellent point. Um, and unfortunately, it's a reality that we got to deal with. But as uh, another friend of mine, Rafiki, uh, had said we can choose whether to support these clones or not which is why I created the the hashtag don't support clones um, ultimately though it it is your choice uh, whether to to buy a clone whatever or not uh, for me personally I choose not to because I um, uh, I appreciate the the R and D uh, uh, that a company uh, that a company gets into uh, with manufacturing their products, and for me, it uh, I wouldn't want to uh, take that away from from them by supporting a clone. So, yeah, I think uh, it's something that we each each of us need to be a little bit conscious of. And uh, just try and put ourselves in in their shoes and uh, and see how you would feel if you had one of your uh, products that you've researched and developed for ages and finally perfected and put out there only for somebody to to clone it directly without design changes and rename it and then sell it. So just think about that. How would you feel? So, yeah, um, the other uh, the other topic I wanted to talk about is something a little bit more lighthearted and aimed at at guys who love to to build uh, bodies and who are who are I won't say fanatical about it, 
but like really enjoy uh, building bodies and and painting and that whole creativity process. So this came about. This next hashtag came about with uh, a couple of guys I was I was talking to. Uh, one of them from uh, uh, DNRC, uh, Ricky Ricky Diaz. Did I say your name right? Diaz Diaz, Ricky Diaz. I don't know. Maybe you can just correct me on that. And my other, my other bro, Rob the pickle Nick. So we were having a little conversation about. Uh, somebody put up a picture of this really nicely done uh, skyline. I think it was a skyline. I remember it being blue. Just say ninja. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. Ricky the ninja, Diaz. How's that? That sounds better. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, so we were having a look at the this body, and it was nicely done, very neat, but missing body lines. So we started the hashtag body line movement. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see, eighty percent of all products in the world gets manufactured in in China. Uh, I completely agree with that, as well. Uh, as Vivian pointed out, thank you, Viv. Um. Yeah, uh, and I know that this uh, China has their own sort of uh, copyright or sorry copying laws, or the lack thereof. Uh, I'm not hundred percent sure on that. I've just I've just heard stuff, but uh, it's just it's just really uh, that that topic about cloning was really more uh, aimed at the cloning of chassis. Uh, specifically really that's actually what the the that's actually what got me thinking and got me talking about it in this uh, on this episode so uh, to the guys that just joined in welcome welcome this is your boy bob rock and this is the b rock rc show a live podcast for the drifters by a drifter um you may have remembered me from uh, that last year on an on a whimsical and frustrating and crazy adventure with me trying to get my passport to get to <laughs> to the world championship and then almost not making it which is crazy but i made it and it was awesome um yeah so the, the next thing i was uh, talking about was the body line movement let's see at dotting lounge if you don't have mirrors on your chassis you're not allowed to slide <laughs> what <laughs> that is crazy. Are you are you serious? Are you serious? Ah, oh, jeez, dude. Then you should really come down this side, and you must see some of the shells that we drifted. Cheapers. <laughs> That's very interesting. Uh, it's a quality where the difference comes in. Um, yeah, you know. Uh, just on a side note, uh, Viv. Uh, a couple of years back, I worked for another company uh, uh, out in Amstranga, and we were uh, involved in uh, doing a design of a high-rise, high upmarket uh, apartment building. And um, shit, oh shoot, where was I going with this? Oh yes, yes, yes. So uh, the developer. Uh, uh, and uh, and some of his friends and investors, they were the guys who who frequently traveled uh, across the world, uh, especially to China and things like that. So they went to the they went to China to uh, um, to see and uh, to try and find some uh, some products uh, and some affordable, cost effective yet high quality products that we can use in the in this uh, apartment building and. He got there and he was, and then he was telling us stories about uh, about the uh, things like uh, the, our aircon units and how the aircons were made in the same factory, but were just uh, branded with the different uh, brands that we find here. And once it comes here, the price difference is ridiculous. And then he got talking with one, some of these manufacturers, and. Uh, one thing that uh, surprised me was that uh, he mentioned that 
if you wanted something of high quality from China, you will get it. If you want something uh, of of a weak quality from China, we'll we'll find it also. So that led me to the, I found it very interesting because that just tells you that not everything from China is uh, a weak quality and vice versa as well so you can get a high-end quality product from china if you want um, yeah you see this is what i'm talking about quality control with the d4 there wasn't proper quality control uh, and as i mentioned earlier uh it was because of this uh this quality control that some people had a, a good experience with the d4 and some and some bad some uh, uh yeah there's some deficiencies in the quality in some of the chassis that that some people got we i i recall like some people saying uh, some of the holes are not lining up and then sometimes the parts gotta be gotta be shipped properly and and things like that all all funny stuff so it's it's really really uh strange and really odd uh yeah so yeah i i hear you man i hear you rich you gotta have standards uh and i, I think in in part uh it, that's sort of what I'm trying to uh, do at our track as well. At our uh, is is try and pick up the the standard and pick up the level so that guys uh, guys know that we expect uh, a little more from them, a little better from them, uh, and then we see a better quality drift or a better quality shell, which is why. I also started hashtag the bodyline movement, guys. If you for the for the less experienced drifters and the less experienced guys doing shells, please do me a favor. Please do me a favor. Put body lines on your body shells. Make your your shell looks a hundred times better it's the little things when it comes to the body shells uh, and maybe vivian will uh can back me up on this or have put you know give his input it's all the little details that make your shell look a lot better so a simple thing like a body line drastically improves the whole look of your shell just try it don't even take my word for it you try it and you have a look take a before picture Without the body lines, do the body lines and take an after picture. And you tell me. You tell me the difference. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, we can we can do that. From now on, I'm just I'm gonna just expect everyone to do it well. <laughs> I'm sure dude, I'm sure you're being sarcastic about that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um uh, yeah, man. Uh so we've been talking about uh, clone chassis and the industry and the body line movement hashtag body line movement and it's all it's all it's all the little details that will that will make your your shell look much better and uh <laughs> yeah there we go we're starting another hashtag uh courtesy of uh, rich you guys can have a look at the comment <laughs> uh body lines easier said than done but yeah practice makes perfect well Stuart, uh, it, uh for me it depends uh how you do it uh there's really two ways about it one is you use a sharpie and you do it freehand which i know a uh, vivian does which is absolutely ridiculous because how the hell does he keep his hand so steady and he does the body line i'm sure many many other people also do it by uh do it freehand uh, and I don't know uh, many who do it freehand, but yeah, jeepers creepers. Viv, how the hell do you do that, dude? Freehand? How how do you hold your hand with your other hand and then do the the <laughs> the body line with the sharpie? Yeah, you know, uh, sandpapering the edges, please, guys. That's another thing. And I'm not just uh, telling you guys. I'm also telling this to myself about sandpapering the edges making the edges smooth 
it's something that uh, I actually need to do uh, uh, as well, put into practice. Speaking of which, I, I'm actually building uh, MK4 Supra, which I need to send people the edges. <laughs> Everything freehand is practice. It's a skill to easily learn. Yes, that's true. That's true. Yeah, that's true. It, everything comes with practice. And if you really want to, to do it, you really want to get it done, then you will practice it. I must admit um, that is correct. What's even more ridiculous uh, uh, with me is that uh, I, I don't want to do it freehand. And I'm in the architectural profession. So <laughs> you would think that I'll be good with freehand and drawing straight lines. But no, uh, I'm so sorry, guys. Sorry to burst that bubble. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm really not that good uh, freehand. Uh, even when I'm just uh, sketching out a little detail just to, to work out how components would work. Uh, jeepers creepers. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm terrible. I am terrible. But on a computer, yeah, I, I can hold my own on a computer. I can hold. Let's see, uh, Kayo says, freehand is quite a challenge. I stick to body lines. Yeah, man, uh, I don't even waste my time with the, with doing body lines uh, freehand. Uh, I've got uh, vinyl cut uh, body lines. I think it must be like about 0.5 mil. Um, and, and I rock with that a little bit, uh, a little bit of heat to it. Mark it out and boom, done. Uh, I don't... Uh, I don't even even try going with a Sharpie because I am that useless. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, for all the guys listening, thank you once again for, for listening. Really appreciate it. Uh, uh, and for the guys that they haven't heard me before, this is your boy, Bob Rock. And this is the B-Rock RC Show, a live podcast for the drifters by a drifter. Uh, thank you once again for listening. Appreciate the support. Um, so we were talking about cloning and body lines and a little bit about bodies, which is awesome. Uh, I must admit, I, I do enjoy building, uh, bodies, uh, painting. I kind of in uh, painting. I only enjoy it when I get it right. Um, uh, I have gotten it right a couple of times, uh, and a few good lessons learned. Uh, I do follow uh, Vivian quite a bit and another friend of mine, uh, David, and another friend, uh, sorry, uh, David Falk, and that's my Kamodi team member, and uh, Matthias, I hope I said your name right, dude, <laughs> please forgive me, uh, Matthias from, uh, where is it, I think, Sweden, I think hope so i think so dude i'm so sorry i know i'm butchering your whole <laughs> the whole thing but yeah um I, I think you you guys would know him uh from his recent body that he did that really uh, out of the box proline i think it's proline beetle with the with the big wing and that matte black and orange and then the white wheel the white wall wheels uh, i'm sure you guys know what i'm talking about yeah, him. So I follow. I, I I try my best to follow the these guys, and follow the how they paint and painting techniques whenever they put something up. Or sometimes I ask them, you know, how you do this, how you paint like that. Uh, so it's it's quite a uh, it's quite a nice experience. Uh, also, uh, I really appreciate that they take the time to share their knowledge and uh, share their tips and tricks which is very cool and i think that's a common thing in the rc drifting uh, in the rc drifting community not just locally but globally is that everybody's ever ready to help um <coughs> yeah tell me about it dude oh my god <coughs> excuse me so <sighs> There was a body that, um, uh, excuse me for a second. <coughs> okay, so there was a body I've been wanting for like forever. And it was uh, the HPI Well JZX100, which I finally got. And 
I had kept this thing and I've been like dreaming about doing up this body and I got it and then I said okay let me go for it let me paint this thing I want a nice candy candy red and uh, I'm gonna put the graphics on it's gonna be awesome and all my dreams are gonna come true so it was so I sat uh, painting this thing and <clears throat> and you know I, I I didn't paint it the way I conventionally did it because I like sort of placed it in a box so I'm not holding it physically and then I, I, and I use a rattle can and I did the paint and then everything just went haywire. Um, uh, I, I sprayed uh, from too close and I used too much of paint and then the paint ran and then I had the silver and then I thought maybe it would cover up all of that and I added the silver in there and then it just looked terrible and then I was just so depressed about it. I was so depressed. And then I was I was like, I'm just gonna butcher the shell and use it like a and use it like a like a basher and just not bother about the thing. So I thought about it and I was like, wait, hold on. Maybe I can salvage this thing. So let me paint half of it. Uh, with the with the gun metal on the outside I did that and I was like oh damn okay it actually turned out quite nice it turned out pretty good so I managed to to salvage it and then I added the graphics and everything so now I'm like sort of happy with it so yeah that's uh, that's been my story about that um yeah so what else guys come on let's see well, what do you guys have to say uh, uh, anything you you'd like to mention what's up guys thank you for joining in um, let's see okay well let me go on to the next thing um, so with uh, sharing the sharing of knowledge and all of these things like uh, I usually talk about a lot I feel strongly about it because um, to me uh, having that knowledge and not sharing it is an absolute waste of energy and time and an absolute waste of the knowledge that you that you gain or the knowledge that you learned like why would you want to learn something perfect it and then not not spread it or or not teach it especially when it comes to this uh, the uh, the drifting uh, community uh, from my whole from the time i've started right through to when i uh, well uh, currently actually um, people have been helping me and i've been helping people and uh, sharing the knowledge I, I feel very strong about share the knowledge guys share it so which leads me to my next uh, my next topic and and this is something which um, uh, I want to pose the the, the question for, to you guys and I want to hear from you um, so that on the next episode uh, I want to share some of uh, some of your your comments uh, and stories that you, you have so what I really want to know from you guys or what I would like for you guys to do is to share some of your your stories and some of your experiences in the uh, RC drifting during your uh, RC drifting sort of career your journey so and specifically what what I'm talking about is uh, okay I'll just give you a little bit about my journey uh, it's the the amount of uh, generosity that's in the the, the global community uh, the global drifting community it's it's mind-boggling how generous the guys in this uh, hobby is it's 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 completely mind uh, mind-boggling and uh, at times I find it hard to to find the words to to say how grateful and how thankful I am to all of these people uh, for everything that they've done for me so um that i i have so many stories about so many people both uh locally and internationally and it's and the funny part about it is it 
every one of those people that has helped me along my journey has been somebody who I've looked up to and who I uh, who I look at when it comes to RC drifting. So and it's been like that from the time I, I started and I, I can't thank you guys. Uh, I will go into a little bit more detail about it in the next episode. But I but I uh, I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, just one or two stories, one or two experiences about the generosity that you receive during your your journey. Okay, so thank you so much, Viv, for for sharing your for parting with your your knowledge a, uh, a little bit. We really really appreciate it. Okay, so Viv says uh, you will never know all the tips and tricks or secrets. Guys, keep a little to themselves always. I absolutely agree. And I don't dispute that at all. Um, I must admit, uh, a few a few tips and tricks I do I do keep to myself. But when I think about it, because of my lack of experience, uh, I find that it's not really a secret because <laughs> people already know about these things. But um, uh, I have come across that uh, before. Uh, I have spoken to a few people who have mentioned the exact same thing, Bob. And I, I do agree with you. Uh, and I think that's with everything. Uh, be it work, be it a hobby. Uh, the people will keep just that one little, that one or two little things to, for themselves. And, that, and that's a little something that will sort of set them apart. And uh, I suppose if somebody does go on that kind of a journey, um, uh, they will eventually discover it. If they search hard enough by themselves so yeah yeah i i do agree with you on that um so yeah guys let's let's hear uh please when you when you have a chance you can either comment on this video or you can inbox me your your drift experience your your experience of uh, generosity in this uh global community in this rc drifting hobby slash sport that we that we love and we're so uh, passionate about i'd love to i'd love to hear some of those stories and i'd love to share uh, one or two of those stories with you guys and i promise next week i will share uh, a number of stories personal experiences with all you guys yeah definitely definitely especially on the track yeah <laughs> that's true but uh, but with that being said largely largely people have uh, are very accommodating to to share the knowledge and uh, and, and help um, maybe not necessarily uh, give all the tricks like you like you so rightly point out but ever ready to help even if it's just the basics uh you know or even uh, just share your your stuff with with the next person uh, you know I, I absolutely agree with you on that okay so Stuart says it's insane who you meet in the R in RC drifting and the lens they go to assist they become family and nothing can take that away hundred percent absolutely agree um, I, I regard all the people that I come across uh, with in uh, RC drifting um, Okay, well, I won't say all, but I'd say like about 98% of, <laughs> of the people I've come across, I regard them as, as family. And I have a few uh, special people uh, who I regard uh, more, who I feel a little bit more close to. Uh, but, and I promise, I will reveal all of that in next week ep episode. But really, I'd I'd like to hear from you guys. I'd like to hear some of your stories. I, I want to share. I want to share some of your stories because I want to show the people who are not in this industry or who have a um, or who have a a different view, a different perspective of RC drifting. I want to show them that. Um, RC drifting is unlike any other RC hobby you come across. We are unique and we are awesome. So I want to show that to the rest of the people and let them know that, guys, you know what? 
we are popping we are what's happening so yeah let's hear some of your stories um sure i actually got quite a quite a bit more i'd love to i'd love to talk about but i think i've been like talking for a minute here i've been talking for quite a bit um so uh i will put the rest of that in for next week episode but there's one last thing um uh, I'd want to I'd want to speak about I know uh, I talk a lot about other people and other aspects and other topics uh, of the RC game RC drifting game but uh, one thing I, I'd like to talk about is uh, my a little bit about my journey in in RC drifting and my sort of accomplishments and my my goals uh in uh, rc drifting so uh, i started out about five somewhat years ago um and i saw this really awesome video on youtube it was a korean street drift challenge uh and then uh, locally in in sa we had a, a forum back when when forums were a thing <clears throat> so we had a forum which was called the uh, 110 uh and that's where ev- all the drifters, everybody got together and shared ideas and built forum things. Um, so I put up a, a, that the, the scene was quite big in Joburg and even bigger in Cape Town. And things were really happening there. Uh, and then I looked at Durban, which is a city where I stay in. And I'm wondering, like, what's going on in Durban this day is it like nobody drifting in Durban um, so why isn't there anybody drifting in Durban why is there no scene so I put up a thread there and it sat dormant for like about a year and then eventually uh, I met up with uh, a friend of mine uh, by the name of Llewellyn and then that's how I started off um, so after a while we we both shared similar dre- similar goals and dreams and like we were like dude you know what how nice would it be if we started an rc club here in durban joba got it cape town has a scene but here in durban we got nothing and i was like yeah dude you know we should definitely do this and then like a couple of months later we we opened the east coast rc drift club and then later on we shared another a dream we like dude what if we open our own track wouldn't it be nice you know we have our own drift track where we can go to and drift and everything and after a while eventually we we did that as well so so it's it's been a long journey building up the club building up the community in uh, the rc drifting community in durban and getting that going and maintaining it it it's a long long hard journey uh and that's another topic I will speak about next week as well, uh, about building a club, uh, building a, a, a building a scene, and building and maintaining a community of drifters in in your local area. And I'll share you guys how I went about with it. So eventually, you know, uh, those were a couple of my goals and my achievements that I managed to to get, managed to succeed with, but. Uh, uh, after a while, my drifting took a dip, and I think it's because I concentrated a lot more about the club and uh, building up the club and building up the community and getting doing uh, exhibitions and uh, and demos and speaking to to manufacturers and local shops to try and get some drum up some support for my team and then look after the team and you know it was quite a bit so i think that's why my uh my drifting took a took a dip um uh so then afterwards i started focusing a little bit more and now i'm at a stage where yes i believe uh, i can drift but i'd love to get a whole lot better uh ultimately uh my main i think my main goal my ultimate goal that i'm trying to uh achieve now is is simply uh the respect of my peers and my colleagues and and by that i mean uh respect as in 
uh, a respected RC drifter. Um, I know it. Uh, I know to some uh, it be serious. That I, perhaps I'm taking it a bit too seriously, uh, but uh, I, I can't. I can't describe. I can't tell you how how much uh, drifting means to me and how how much I love this hobby and how much it has become and how much of good it has done for me and how much of balance it it's brought into my life so it's not just uh it's not merely a, a hobby or a sport for me i'd say drifting for me is a whole, whole that's my my current aim and it's been my aim for a long long time is to gain the respect uh of my peers and my colleagues uh that when they look at me uh i want them to to think that or want them to see that you know i respect him as a drifter uh, he's not just any drifter he's a good drifter I, I know i may never be i perhaps i may never be like like super amazing absolutely great drifter but uh, for me that uh, just gaining that respect to will will mean a hell of a lot uh even if they don't say it but you know sometimes uh, you naturally get a get a vibe and you you can sort of tell by the body language or perhaps sometimes you see it on the face like oh, you know this guy is like oh, it's okay um not bad you know that kind of thing i i don't want them to <laughs> i don't want them to to have that kind of opinion of me i know it sounds like a whole bunch of hogwash it sounds so awful and so terrible um and you know some may say uh i'm being perhaps a little bit too hard on myself but um yeah man it's just uh, i don't know i i feel like uh i need to hold myself to a, a higher level of accountability like a higher level of uh, of drifting so that's why i'm working a lot harder at my drifting now and trying to get all of those things right and also more than drifting just uh, understanding what i'm doing because once you understand what you're doing you actually do it better um so yeah man that's my uh, that's been my uh, my goal is just just to gain the respect like you know when when my people look at me and say yeah that that's a good drifter you know that's i i respect that guy that's he, that's a good drifter so yeah that's my that's my goal for the moment uh well for my my whole journey uh and also to try and remain as humble as possible always remaining humble in the game uh i i don't think i'm better than uh, anybody else uh, I just feel that uh, some, uh, in some cases, I have a little bit more experience than uh, than other guys, but certainly it doesn't make me any better than anybody else. So always try to be humble in the game. Um, so yeah, guys, that's that's me. That's your boy Bob Rock, and this is the B Rock RC Show, a live podcast for the drifters by a drifter. Uh, you can you guys can uh, catch me on um, Instagram at Bob underscore rock. Uh, you can catch me on Facebook as well as you clearly do anyway. But I also upload all the episodes to YouTube. Uh, and uh, I don't have enough subscribers or followers on YouTube as yet uh, so that I can change the name. So you guys are stuck with this weird uh, gibberish of a code. <laughs> Uh, but I'll put up the link to my YouTube channel so you can catch the rest of the the other episodes and perhaps this episode if you missed the rest, uh, if you missed the beginning. Once again, I really appreciate uh, all of the support and you guys listening in. It's been awesome. And I will catch you guys next week. So take care. Happy drifting. Peace.